Hello everyone, this is Rudri Pathak from Department of Pharmaceutical Technology, LG Institute of Pharmacy, Ahmedabad. Welcome to the online MOOC lecture series, an initiative taken by LG Institute of Pharmacy, a part of LG Group of Institutes. In today's session, we are going to talk about fermentation technique of a very well-known antibiotic and that is penicillin. So let's begin with our lecture. Uh, to have a quick overview about today's lecture, we are going to discuss about what are the various parts or what are the various segments in penicillin fermentation. Along with that, we are also going to discuss that what will be the max distribution for each and every segment, if at all it is asked in university-based subjective examination. So I think it is very crucial for us to understand that if we skip out any step, how much marks we are going to lose or how much marks we are going to fetch ultimately. So let's begin with the lecture. First of all, we need to understand that penicillin is fermented by which technique? If you remember our last lectures, we have discussed that the, there are two techniques with which fermentation is actually carried out. First is surface fermentation, where fermentation will be carried out just on the surface of fermentation media. And next will be submerged fermentation, which will be in the liquid state, where fermentation will be carried out in a tank, homogeneously. Okay. Now, the good part about penicillin fermentation is that it is carried out by both the techniques. So, you can list out both of them in the examination. Okay. Next will be a very crucial part that what are the microorganisms which we are going to select for penicillin fermentation. Now the microorganisms from which it was carried out at the beginning was penicillium prasutidum. Please remember the name with proper spelling because that is very important as far as microbiology and biotechnology is concerned. Now, to enhance the yield and to increase the productivity, we now have four mutant strains available in the market, which is listed in the slide right now. Now, all of them are equally good and can be utilized in the industry based on the demand and supply. Okay. Next is, which is again very important, that once we have these mutated strains available with us, what are we going to do with them? Or we can say if we want to store these mutated strains for a longer time duration, what are we going to do? Okay, So we have three options available with us with which we can store our mutated strains for longer time duration. First is we can prepare a spore and it can be stored while it can be converted into a desiccated version. Next is we can also undergo lyophilization which is going to enhance its overall stability and make it possible for longer time duration to be stored. And the third and last but not least option is storage in liquid nitrogen which is approximately at minus 70, 70 degrees Celsius. So ultimately, we are converting these mutated strains from liquid state to a solid state in which it can be stored for a longer time duration till the time it is utilized for final fermentation technique. Okay, so please have a note on this that how can we store these microorganisms for a longer time duration. This particular segment is of one mark. Next is... As we have seen in our first slide, penicillin is having a very complex structure. Now, to have that complex structure, microorganisms will require some amount of raw materials and they will require some precursors. That is the starting point based on which it will be converted into a full-fledged complex structure. So, for penicillin, the precursor will be PAA, that is phenyl acetic acid, which is given in the PowerPoint presentation also. Now, this PAA, that is addition of PAA in the fermentation tank is extremely important because based on that, microorganisms are going to convert 
the raw materials into a complex structure and ultimately yield penicillin as a product. Next is, as we have already talked, we need certain amount of raw materials based on which microorganism will metabolize them and will convert them into penicillin. Now, why do we need raw materials and what should be the criteria for selection of, of them? We cannot select any random material for our fermentation technique. We need to have some amount of criteria. So there are three criteria. First is it should yield to abundant growth of mycelium. What is mycelium? That is our fungus, the microorganism which we are going to use for penicillin fermentation. So it should promote growth of them. It should not lead to death of those microorganisms. It should favor their growth or uh, their overall metabolism. Next is it should also yield or it should also ultimately uh, favor maximum production of penicillin, which is our antibiotic. And it is applicable to any other antibiotic also. Whatever raw materials we select, it should promote or it should favor its growth. Okay. And last but not the least, raw materials should be such that at the end of the process, they should be easily removed from our main material or from our fermented product. They should be easily purified or separated. So based on these three criteria, we need to have certain raw materials. What are they? First of all, microorganisms are going to need or they will need a um, source of energy. And what do we say? Source of carb. Okay. So uh, that carbon source will be provided by lactose. In a particular concentration, you need to remember that concentration also. Next is they will also require some amount of nitrogen, which will be provided by the ingredients given in the presentation. Next is they will be require certain sources of minerals also to promote their overall metabolism and growth during the fermentation tenure. Now, along with that, we are also going to use a very important ingredient and that is corn steep liquor. Now, corn steep liquor is a multi-purpose ingredient which is going to provide us a source of carbon as well as a source of nitrogen. And it is basically prepared from starch or corn-based products. And it is proven that it enhances overall production or overall yield of penicillin as such. So please remember corn steep liquor is an important ingredient as a raw material for enhancing the growth of a microorganism or enhancing the overall production of penicillin. Next is we will have a quick list of all the ingredients which we are going to use in the fermentation based production media of penicillin. So first of all, we will be having corn steep liquor in a concentration of 3.5%. Then we will be having lactose and glucose, which will serve as a source of carbon Then calcium carbonate, which will provide our mineral then potassium dihydrogen phosphate for managing of pH and overall balance of pH. Then edible oil in a temperature range of 25 degrees Celsius. That is all the ingredients will be maintained at 25 degrees Celsius throughout the fermentation tenure. And another important requirement is the fermentation will require aeration throughout the process because the microorganisms that is penicillium chrysogenum require oxygen for their metabolism and growth and also for production of penicillin. So, aeration will be there. Next, we will be adding certain anti-foaming agents also. Coming up to the next session is extraction and purification. Again, a very important step. Also, it is of one mark if the question is asked for five or six marks. It is very important. Now, extraction and purification will be carried out in two steps. First will be removal of mycelium. Now, what is mycelium? Mycelium is the dead body parts, uh, which in this case will be penicillium chrysogenum, dead body parts. So, we are going to remove them. Now, the thing is, the good thing is penicillin will be present exocellularly. 
So microorganisms will be having uh, their dead body parts or microorganisms may be in living state also. And penicillin will be present in the liquid media, media that is outside the body of microorganisms. So what do we need to do now? We need to separate those microorganisms. And how are we going to do that? Using filtration. Now that there is a particular filtration technique which we are going to use and that is rotary vacuum filter and also rotary drum filter and that is uh, utilized for removal of microorganisms as well as their dead body parts. Now care should be taken that at this particular state there should not be any contamination by a particular microorganisms and that is Penicillin is producing microorganism. Now, if we look at the structure of penicillin, there is a particular segment which I am going to show you right now. And this is known as beta lactam ring, which is denoted by this square region. Now, if when we are carrying out uh, filtration, that is removal of uh, dead body parts, or mycelium at that particular point if we undergo contamination by certain microorganisms which produce penicillinase then they are going to attack this particular segment of penicillin produced penicillin fermented penicillin which is already available in the media okay now if this particular segment of um, penicillin is destroyed or it is attacked by penicillinase producing microorganism, then this penicillin will not be having the same pharmacological activity which is expected from them. Okay, so care should be taken and this is also asked in university examination, also in comments in university examination that care should be taken that microorganism which is synthesizing penicillinase which is an enzyme, ACE means enzyme, they should be avoided at the time of filtration to avoid any destruction in the basic structure of penicillin. Please keep that thing. Next is extraction of penicillin. So in filtration and separation, what did we did do first? We separated the dead parts or the microorganisms first. So in the uh, filtration vessel, what do we have now? We'll be having penicillin. But we want pure form of penicillin. So how do we get that using extraction? Now it is not a simple extraction. It is a counter current extraction in which the penicillin will be treated with acidic and basic medias. Okay, so as you can see, uh, the filtrate or the penicillin containing a uh, filtrate will be first treated with an acidic media, which is in the pH range of 2 to 2.5. And that pH will be uh, actually maintained by phosphoric acid or any other acid in which penicillin should be stable ultimately. Okay. Next is the same um, segment or the same filtrate will now be treated with a neutral or uh, aqueous buffer, which is maintained at a pH of 7 to 7.5. The extracted penicillin will be again treated with acidified organic solvent and this process is going to continue till we get a purified form of penicillin again. So that is why it is known as counter current extraction in which the media is ultimately changed from acidic to neutral to again acidic and so on. The process is just to purify penicillin and to have the purest available form. So, uh, before I wind up with the lecture, I would like to repeat or revise for you that whatever we have discussed so far, uh, we have discussed a very basic technique of penicillin fermentation and we started with the technique that is the method which is utilized for penicillin fermentation, then the microorganisms, what range of microorganisms we are going to use, then storage of those mutated strains of microorganisms till we use them. Then the precursors. What are the precursors that we are going to use? Then the raw materials, very important, on which microorganisms are going to feed themselves and then undergo metabolism and prepare the penicillin-based product. 
Then we also discussed some extraction and purification and separation techniques for penicillin. Stay tuned for more such lecture series and I hope you enjoyed the video. Please do subscribe and like the video. Thank you so much for your attention. See you in the next session.